welcome back welcome back and before we get into this afternoon's presentation on cash management a very important aspect of your business i just want to recap on one of the matters discussed this morning and to answer some of the questions that came about and to clarify perhaps for some persons what had been discussed I, focus, I want to focus on the area of not investments, but assets. Uh, investments in this context would be investments in other businesses and equities and um, funds, money market funds and things. Those are investments. My focus this morning was on the issue of assets, equipment, furniture and fixtures owned by the business. Um, so when I say assets here, I'm looking at motor vehicles, equipment that you own computers that you own furniture within the business let me let me we'll take that even further if you're running a business from home there are some assets that that businesses would that business would use that really should be attached to the business or be involved in the business so for me um i operate from home the condition in the room that i'm operating in is a business expense the furniture in the room that I'm operating in is the business furniture. The equipment in terms of computer, calculators, et cetera, belong to the telephone system is in the business expense. Those things that can be classified as assets, items or have more than 12 months of useful life attached to them form part of the assets of the business and should be recorded as indicated here on an index card. So you can get a number of index cards and say, okay, I have a motor vehicle. I have a date, it was bought, the, the description of the vehicle, engine number, chassis number, serial number, of course, any other important documentation, but more importantly, the price. We haven't disposed of it yet. We have not a sales proceed, anything like that yet but we want to know what the cost of it is. Ideally, what you should do is photocopy the purchase invoice for the asset and staple it attached to the index card. So you can easily quickly go and find the invoice if you need to. The invoice will also be stated within, with the work of the business. So you photocopy it and put it into attached to the index card. Equipment, like, so you're gonna say, okay, furniture, the furniture in the office, so you could put a label on the furniture and you can identify identified by some unique number and therefore you have the chairs the various chairs the tables the bookcases the filing cabinets those things can be put together as furniture and you can label them with a, with a tag or label on the item itself that reflects a number back onto the index card and you have the index card with regard to the particular asset item so motor vehicle assets office furniture is an asset, office equipment is an asset, computer equipment is a separate asset. More important than that, um, the, the Board of Inland Revenue will classify it in that manner. Motor vehicles, office equipment, furniture and fixtures, because each of them have a different depreciation or, classi or classification. We also said to you all, you might be running the business now, but bringing in to assets that you already own previously and you may not remember the costing of this. What we are saying to you is that you would want to note the asset in the, in the next card, and you put your treating that prices based on your current market pricing, based on where you think the value of it is to date for you. But it has to be reasonable. It cannot be outlandish because you just put in a price on it. It's compared to current market pricing, and yes, you might some wear and tear on it, and you put a price that is reasonable. It is that asset listing that I want to bring into the business. And I want to bring that asset into the business for a number of reasons, simply because assets are expenditure in the business over a period of time. It is taken into account for determining your profitability and therefore there's a depreciation charge. That's an expense of the asset written off over its useful life. And for tax purposes and for accounting purposes, that depreciation is important for the assets that you own. Um, so that be mindful of that. Uh, I trust it answers your question. Please ensure that you, you need the, on your balance sheet, 
or the statement of financial position, you want to show what assets the companies own, and therefore you should have, everything that you own in the business should be on your register and should be reflected in the balance sheet of your business. I think that should be sufficient. If you have any further questions on that, you could email to me. I left my email address there for comment, and I think you have my phone number beforehand. This afternoon session, I would want to deal with the issue of cash management. I think at this time you appreciate the importance of record keeping and the, what documents you're supposed to have, what books you're supposed to keep, the importance of keeping the books. And let, let me just make it quite clear. If you go forward in business and don't keep your books on records, you're not in business. You're playing. You're playing from the point of view that there in your journey of your business, you be called upon to account for what you're doing and to show what you're doing. So it's very important that you do make sure that you have the records and you can demonstrate it. And here's the, here's the key to the whole thing. You may not get it right today, but you start doing something and you may talk to me, you may talk to somebody else and they may show you, well, here's how you improve what you're doing and here's how you improve it even more. And over a period of time, you get better and better doing it. And as you become better doing it, you begin to understand it even more and know how to use it. So let's get into this issue of cash management. And why we have linked cash management to this whole thing of record keeping, because unless you get your records right and know what you have, um, you will not necessarily know what cash you have. What is cash available to you based on the, of what you have? What you need to be looking at is, what you need to be looking at is you need to put yourself in a place where you understand your cash management. And I'll show you why very early in the game. Let me see if we can collaborate on this and work this out. What is cash? Cash is what we have on hand in notes and coins. Cash is the deposits at the bank or the credit union that we have. Cash equivalent is the money market fund or the unit trust deposit that you may have, a bank overdraft or credit cards things that where you can get money on quite easily, but they're not necessarily need to put it near cash items. I can draw my credit card because it's a loan I'm taking. I have an overdraft, I don't have the money, but the bank overdraft allows me to take more money than I normally have. Those things are cash equivalents. You have easy access to it, but it's access you have that you can get cash available to you. Why is this important? In any business, in any business domain, how you look at it, the whole issue of cash flow. Cash flow is what we call king. I think you've heard that remark, cash is king, from the point of view that from a business, your financial income, your profit and operations, don't mind what you do within that business. Cash flow is important. Cash must be available to you as and when you need it. If your cash is not available to you as and when you need it, you'll find yourself in a place where you might not have the cash to buy the things that you want when you want. So that cash is important. Now, for me to best explain this, it is better I jump in there and give a quick example. Normally, if we were in a class environment, I would give you the headache of figuring it out for yourself. but I will want to demonstrate this to you in a very simple way with a simple example. And hopefully we work it out together and we see how we understand it. Go with me on this for a minute. You all decided to set up a hamburger cart. For those of you in San Fernando, outside Skinner Park, for those of you in Port of Spain, perhaps at the Queen's Park Savannah. And apart from the initial investment in that cart, and cooler, et cetera, you have this expense. So I'm making this lovely burger. And for those of you who just had lunch, I'm sorry. So the cost of eight hamburgers, the bun is about 950, the patty is about $50. Uh, you have other ingredients, of course, which will cost you about 450. And the total cost of this burger is about $64 for the burger. Now, it's a quality burger, so it's kind of expensive. Huh? So be careful here. The yeah. you have 
the cost per unit, right, is $8. The cost per unit is $8. And we might be in a very fortunate place in that we can sell We can sell that burger for perhaps twelve dollars, we can sell it for twelve dollars, giving us a profit of four dollars. Now I want you to stick with me on this, I'm going to go very slowly and we're going to stop and look at it and decide how we treat with it. You have decided to set up a hamburger stand, this is the basic cost, a bun, a patty, ingredients, $8 is the cost of doing the burger, $12 is the selling price, and $4 is the profit that you're making. Let's look at this thing carefully now. Each day you engage in activity, you sell approximately 100 units, and therefore your daily sales is $12. Your daily cost is $800 and you will find therefore at that point you're good to go you're making 400 dollars profit you're doing if you're doing that every day for 12 for the five days in the week monday to friday you should be all right but consider the impact of allowing workers at the nearby construction to pay you at the end of a week meaning you just decide that you want to give credit but let's look at what's going to happen Let's look at what's going to happen to you. Okay. If on Monday, go with me on this. If on Monday, I sold 100 units at a selling price of $1,200, $12, I got a selling price of $1,200, I have no credit. There's no cash in the issue. I spend $800 to do it. I am $400 profit. Things are nice. I decide now to go on next to this construction site. The people who I'm selling to are just these construction guys. And these are assumptions that we have. So come Tuesday, come Tuesday, what happens to you? On Tuesday, you sell the 100 at your $12 and the selling price is $1,200 in total, but you don't get $1,200. You get $600 on credit and you only receive cash of $600. You are still spending that $800 and you made $400 profit. Assuming no investment of profit in that sense, or even if I do reinvest my profit, I decide to give credit. So come the next day, which is Wednesday, if I only have this amount of cash, which is the $600 in cash, all right? I only have $600 in cash. Therefore, the number of units I can now make is only 75 burgers. I can sell that at 1200. I could only make 900. And from that 900, 50% goes into credit, 50% goes into cash. So from that, from that sorry, oops, there's supposed to be 450 here, sorry. You can wait, Matik, 450. Yep. And you are left with, so you spend 600, and all you are left with is a $300 profit see what is beginning to happen to you as the day goes on when you are giving credit on thursday on thursday you have less that you can sell your sales is reduced and of course the cash that you get is also further reduced so come by friday come by friday and you realize that your sales would have gone down because you do not have sufficient cash to purchase the goods that you want. And I trust in this stark reality, you begin to see 
this whole issue of credit and putting things on balance parcel and, and giving and offering that kind of service. Let me be very clear with you now. Coming out of what is going on today in the world, credit is going to become a double-edged sword. Some people will insist on credit and some people will insist on no cash at all. I don't want no cash. I don't want, I don't want you not, I want all my cash up front before I do anything. So those of you who are in the type of business that you're in, in terms of the creative industry, you will have to look at trying to determine how much credit you will want to give, if none at all, because it has a way to impact your business. And that's what you have to be mindful of. Because the credit could stifle you as you go along. And you don't want to be in that position. So that when you look at it from a cash point of view, we are in a place where you would have determined quite easily the cost of what you're doing, the profit from doing it, the price from doing it. And in doing that, it makes money. But the decision that you make in the business in terms of should I give credit and if so, how much will impact the cash availability in your business. Be cautious, people. Going forward, you will find as you go out there, people insisting that if you want me to do something for you now, given the fact that we are socially distant, pay me up front because I don't want to come look for you. You will find going out there that people want to deliver to you stuff rather than you come and get it. Pay cash in advance before delivered to you, please. Price smart, high low, no, sorry, Massey. Yes, the delivering. But you know you had to pay before you get it. They're not giving you credit because the nature of their business doesn't allow for that to happen. On the other hand, you are making an outfit for somebody. Once that outfit leaves you, you have no control over it. Therefore, giving credit is not something I would easily advise unless you put in place the systems to manage it effectively and to take it where, to, to take it where you need to take it. So what are the issues of costing therefore? If cash is a problem, let's look at this, the costing issue and the cost of holding cash. If you don't have it, it is evil. If you do have it, great for you. But even holding it is a problem. The, the cost of not holding cash or not having cash is the inability to meet bills when they fold you. Bottom line, simple. A bill comes, you don't have cash, you can't pay. The cost of lost opportunity. You have no cash, something comes, get involved in this, let's do this quickly. There's no special offer. You can't purchase it because you have no cash. And then there's the cost of borrowing the cash in order to obtain it to do the things that you want to do. So there's a, don't mind what you do. The root of all evil is cash and the cash is also necessary for you to have. If you don't have it, there's a cost for not having it. And that is why people, you all would need to ensure in the businesses that you're in, that you're always Cash is always at your fingertips. Do not start somebody's project. Do not start somebody's work unless you get a significant down payment for the work that you're about to do. In this season, in this season of the COVID-19, you may tell yourself that you will want to be in a place that says, give me more than 50%, maybe three quarter down. And when you come to delivery, take 25%. That way, if they are socially distant from you totally. You're not lost for what you're doing. Social distancing in the environment has an impact on your business. You're not supposed to be on the road. What are you doing on the road? You can't run down your money. And therefore, you have to find ways to collect your cash in advance and not have to be running after it and trying to find somebody um, on the road. You can't tell the police, well, I'm running down this month to collect my money. That's not a necessity. You know, you're not supposed to be on the road for that. 
so that we mind you want to be conscious of these things and how it impacts your business in the example provided the minute you make that decision to allow credit has an implication to your business mm -hmm. for some of you um, for some types of businesses we can put a retainer in and every month you get your money not a problem and therefore that helps you to cover your overheads for the businesses that you all might be in where somebody saying to you design something let the thought get it sewn or whatever have you you start working on doing things but you don't want to be doing that on your money you want to be doing that on somebody else's money and therefore it's important that you say to yourself in the business here's how i operate in the business that i'm in you pay 25 or 75 or 65 percent down and the balance when you come back to collect if you come back to collect have your cash then you get your goods you don't have your cash don't come and get your goods make it very simple very clear cost of holding cash you have loss of interest if it had been in, if you have your if you had invested your cash you might have made interest loss of opportunity to generate further revenue meaning if i don't have the cash how could i get more things out of the book that i'm doing buy more product buy more goods and therefore you have to put in place a certain level of cash to have the day-to-day -day expenses being maintained you can't invest in, in for the inventory in the hamburger business that we were dealing with because the cash available to the business was re being reduced on a daily basis the ability to produce and buy goods every day was diminishing until friday and then worse yet come the friday you know everything just goes sometime in trinidad well i'll go check me next week now and get it today and then you have to line up outside by the pay master to make sure they give you your money you don't want to go through those hassles and headaches going down the road the issue therefore is security of uh, and, and of, of course insurance cost you want to put in place to cover yourself in such a way that if anything happens to you you can secure your cash you know if you if somebody steals from you you can have that covered there's insurance for those things so that the issue about cash and the, the cash is like the air to the business if you don't have cash you may not be able to do your business so therefore the important thing therefore to do is to be able to manage the cash that you have in a way that you can ensure that the business can continue here's another bit of advice for some of you and it's not in my slide but as i'm saying it now it, it hits me it is worth your while if you have good cash flow in your business or you started off with good cash have two accounts you check an account to do to write transactions and do the business and open what is called a money market or investment account so that you put money on it that gets interest money on a checking account uh, or even a savings account to some extent there's a monthly charge against it and therefore you're not earning by that so a business would have a reserve of cash and also the cash operating account that you operate in try to have your cash in two places cash on the point of view of cash to operate with and cash that you're investing in and holding in case you have an urgent need for cash going down the road how do we cash flow or how do you want to improve cash flow cash flow efficiency of this cash we need to manage manage our inventory we want to forecast as accurately as we can what we can realistically sell look at the delivery times shop around and compare prices between different suppliers and consider as best as you can bulk discounts you're in the creative industry you require certain uh, materials you get together a group of you and you buy in bulk so that you could minimize the cost of what i call basic standard materials you want to minimize that cost you don't you don't want to be in a place whereby you you just simply have um not capitalize on the opportunities to manage your, your cost and manage how you spend and how you receive your money so in this case you want to manage the inventories that you have the material that you have to buy the goods that you have to buy by the way can i get credit from you and i'll pay you back in two months or nine months whatever you can negotiate with your suppliers try in this rounds suppliers may, may have to understand that you need to stretch out to give you some time to pay because of the circumstances around at the same time you in your business will want to curtail your credit so that you have cash available to do the things that you need to do 
if you wish to improve your cash flow, if you want to improve your cash flow, there are also strategies to improve that your cash flow. You want to manage your receivables and you want to manage them in a manner that you find a way to ensure that you always have cash coming in. You can offer incentives to prompt payment. So the person who comes to you and pays cash, there's a better price. But the person who comes to you and wants credit, you can't be selling something at the cash price at the credit price too. That shouldn't cut it because the longer it takes you to collect your money, the more costly it is for you. So bear in mind that if you say to me that uh, this blouse costing $300 and that's the cash price and I come to you and I want it on credit, give me it on a layaway, give me it for the next few months, you bet your bottom dollar I expect that I have to pay more for that product. Offer to make um, your customer easy for him to pay, um, links machines, direct credit to your bank account. Um, today in this, in this area of online banking, perhaps um, people can pay um, forward to you your payment directly online. And if I do that, I will give you a discount if you do that for me, not a problem. Dispatch invoices in a timely manner. There are different ways of doing that. All the technology that you use should be able to afford you to invoice beforehand. Now, again, if you have the data with regard to your customers, remember upfront and early in record management, we said it's important to have data on your customer. So if I know that James is going to collect his clothes from me at month end, April 30th, I should be sending him his invoice by email today. I will be ready on the 30th. This is your bill and pay when you come. So you're trying to get out from him the money as quickly as possible. Request payment in advance. And therefore, I would expect that for the work that you are doing, between 50 to 75% of your payment is your down payment in advance of your work. Dispatch invoices on a timely basis. And please follow up to make sure people pay you on time. Deposit the checks you get immediately. Don't hold them back. You will gather some checks, get it to the bank, and deposit them. And then consider offering some kind of sale or continuing continue sales. Get customers to pay the entire order early o'clock or by some retainer. So if you come to me, payment in advance before you even start. Payment in advance. There's a product I buy from overseas, and the supplier will not give it to me unless I pay in advance. And sometimes it takes six weeks to get here. So I'm out of pocket six weeks. In the business that you're in, you need to assess your, what your colleagues are doing and at the same time put in place systems to manage your business more effectively. Other ways to improve your cash on the payable side. So I have things to pay, I have bills to pay. So therefore, I could apply for credit now. Go back to records management. If I have to apply for credit and I represent myself effectively by presenting my financial statements, some suppliers will give you credit on the basis that you pay them on a timely basis. You may have to talk your way into it. And therefore, it's important for your records management to be up to date and you have a nice financial statement and you can ask your suppliers for credit. You can finance, finance purchases via your credit card. Now, I don't advise this except that the way the credit card systems work in this country, it is important that when you purchase on your credit card, you settle the credit card in full within the 45 days. Within 45 days, you need to settle your credit card in full. Once you don't settle it in full, interest begins to be charged on the outstanding balance. So you can leverage your credit card for cash, but please settle it within the 45 days. If you are dealing with payments and you're making payments by check, you can decide to post those payments. And that makes it easy, even, even easier for you because you can confirm to somebody that you dispatch payment and that gets where it has to go. On the other hand, if you have online banking arrangements, the minute you push that button and say enter, by next day, the money, the money is out of your account immediately, but by next day, it gets into the other person's account. So that it works kind of fast, but you have to be able to manage it. And please avoid paying any invoices you have too early. So therefore, if credit terms are given to you, please maximize the credit terms given to you in a significant way. 
with regard to, to cash flow improvement strategies, the objective here is that we should create a realistic cash budget and stick to it. Remember we said put together the records management, get your records out so you know what your income and expenditure is. We also said that for banking or opening a bank account, you need to have cash flow. And we're also saying to you today, if you budget by giving estimates of expenditure and revenue, you begin to manage your business more effectively. How much do I expect to earn and what do I expect to spend? You know what you need to do in order to be profitable or to have cash. So create a realistic cash budget and stick to it. This is what I'm going to spend on. This is what I have to spend on at a certain time and, and then deal with it. You tend to do those things on a monthly basis. Match whatever financing arrangements you have with regard to the purchases that you're making. Do not use short-term financing for long-term money use. What am I saying? I am saying to you, you have financing arrangements that you need to match where your money is needed and how you need to how you will receive money and how you're going to spend. Do not go out and say to yourself, well, I want to buy a house and your funding and your financing is just for three or five years. If you're going to have a significant investment, then try to make it as long-term to have a smaller outflow of cash as may be necessary. Avoid paying finance charges as best as you can. If you look at it, sometimes your finance charges tend to be very high. The bank is charging you on US accounts like $23. You don't even have to use the account, just have the money in the account. And then they will charge you interest and taxes and service charges on top of that. So when you find yourself in an overdraft position, unauthorized, then you find yourself having to pay charges of interest and other things that you need not be doing. Avoid paying finance charges as best as you can. Do not settle debts that um do not settle debts by further debts do not go into debt to pay off debt all right making that abundantly clear somebody that i knew recently um had an issue it was a debt in order to clear the debt the first thing they wanted to jump out and pay it i will also give you a good example i was going through a financing arrangement with a bank in the last month or two and because of what I see happening now, it is better I pay them off over a period of time without no new financing arrangements than having to go and take another loan and reorganize it in that particular way. So the answer is you, you try to settle your debts, yes, but don't take debt in this time to go and pay off debt. That does not cut it. Reconcile your bank accounts regularly, because as I said to you, bankers do make mistakes. And therefore, cash flow is important to you, and you need to monitor your bank balances. So, those of you who have your your sole trader businesses, try in this day and age to have internet access to your bank. It breeds for efficiency. You can get bank statements uh, at a push of a button. You can see what your bank balances are. You can make payments online if you want, or you can make uh, payments via the bank. I have bank internet banking, but I there's some people I do pay. Unless I go to the bank or send them a check, because that time extra helps in terms of my cash flow. So by the time the check is sent to them and they deposit in the bank, I have four days. I have four days to get my to make sure I get other money into the bank to sort the bank out properly. So you have to manage that. Debt with equity, um, point five. What debt with equity means? You don't want to be bor um, borrowing to pay things. What you want to do is to leverage the equity that you have. For example, I have a house. I have equity in the house. Or I have a car and I have equity in the car. I have a debt to pay off. I may want, therefore, to leverage the equity that I have. Use the equity, therefore. Don't want fine or no more debt. If you, want to, if you want to do something like this, you want to use some asset that you have, you can convert to cash with part of it to cash and reduce your debt in that way that way you're not borrowing to pay but using the equity that you have i have a cash surrender value on insurance policy that's equity in the insurance policy 
all right? I can liquidate my, I can, yes, I can liquidate my debt, but I don't put myself in a, in a worse off place than I need to be. I want to have, I want to leverage the equity. Replace the debt with the equity you have. So you want to be able to, 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 to what, I, what I would say to you is, you want to be able to put yourself in a place where you are building equity. Take the time off and repay the debt slowly. Stretch the debt payment out so that the banker says to you, oh, you need to, to, to refinance your mortgage. Not really, not now. Now is not the time to do that. But I want to do is that stretch it out. I continue to pay whatever instruments I have to pay. And as time elapses, I have more equity in the property. And when I have more equity in the property, you can decide on some little bit if you want to refinance everything and then do something, some, some productive expenditure that you want to have. Do not take debt and create more debt. Do not take debt money to pay off debt money. All right? Use your money wisely from the point of view. Stretch off your debt payment. Any banker now, remember, I'm now, let's be careful too. They're saying to you now, go to the bank and arrange a moratorium. Moratorium have interest charges against it. So you have to investigate with the bank. When you give me some deferral of payment, do I still have to pay interest? And if so, how much? Because the interest stop, keep running. If you can afford it, it is better you continue to pay or you pay a smaller installment, yes, and keep it running so that you have less to pay in the long run. So that all those offers of deferral of payment, before you, you decide to exercise that deferral, please investigate whether or not interest charges will be maintained during the referral period. Because after the referral period is done, you have the principal balance still outstanding and additional interest to the time that you didn't pay. So be mindful of that, ask the question and see what the numbers mean to you and see whether it's in your interest to exercise the options of deferring liability. Do not take debt and then go and borrow to pay off debt. Renegotiate the terms of that debt, stretch out the payment if you want to, so that you don't find yourself in a place where you're just sinking money after dead money. Money must be used productively. You must invest in productive opportunities and try to do things that will yield you some return so that you can meet your commitments and do what you have to do. Try to control this whole issue of growth and expansion because you expand your business, don't just expand your business willingly. Right now, it is good to look and see what you're doing be cautious in the marketplace, um, consolidate what you're dealing with, because we have a period of time over the next 18 months to two years that things will be kind of slow and taking a while to get organized. And we need to be, be very careful as to how we go with investing and spending. The importance of savings and investment. So let's get down to this one. Savings is a method of deferring spending for use in the future. I said to you just a while ago, if you have a business and you go into your bankers, get two accounts, get a money market account and have a checking account for day-to-day -day business. There's the old Chinese proverb that says, for whatever I'm earning, I am saving 10%. If you're lucky, you can save 10% more, that's 20%. But whatever you make, try and put aside something. Whatever you make, try and put aside something. Because as night follows day, you'll always have a need for cash going down the road. Don't just put it into your bank account and spend, spend, spend. You, you, you budget to make sure that you spend within the certain limits and that you put aside, put aside something for future requirements. It's important that savings form part of the company's culture that you have. So the business that you have must have a savings component attached to it. Do not just simply have one account and everything that comes into account, you spend it. Because you're a sole trader, what is yours is not necessarily the business. The business is separate and apart from you. So have a savings for the business uh, opposed to your savings. It's not the same thing. The business savings is a business savings. Treat the business like an individual and let it have its own savings portfolio. Savings allows you to meet unforeseen expenses. As this thing closed down, as uh, COVID-19 um, COVID closed down a lot of businesses, some people have expenses to meet. Some customers are not paying on time. Therefore, you, you need to have some, you should have had some kind of reserve of cash that you can carry you for a month or two months or three months or a year, given how much you would have saved over a period of time. And that's the lesson in, in, in what's going on. For many people, as you would see out right now, people have challenges outside there and you need to be 
uh, mindful of ways and means of how you manage your business affairs so that you find yourself not not um, disturbed um, aggressively by the way things are at outside. So if I had a safe, is a position within my business, you know something, I, I, if I don't see a client next month or month after because I have enough to carry me through to meet my overhead cost. You all must know what it costs you to run this business. You must know what it costs you to run your business and therefore you want to be sure of how much money it takes to ensure that at the end of a month, you cover all your costs. The key to savings is to put aside a certain percentage of your earnings. And that's what I was saying. 10%, 20%, monthly basis, please put it aside. It will serve you in good stead. And you have sometimes when you, you put aside $200 and you put it aside. But when you put it aside, remember there's compound interest because you're earning interest upon interest. And that too is beneficial to you. You put aside $200 a month, however small it is. Put aside something from what you earn, so that when the cover season does come, um, you will be in a place where you can survive a couple of months without having to worry as to what you have to do. Let's talk about cash budgeting because we said there that you must sit down and you must budget your cash. You want to forecast your sources of cash. You want to forecast where you're going to use cash. And then you want to calculate um, whatever shortfalls or surpluses you have. Now, I want you to do this. I want you to look at this um, because the bank will ask you when you go to open a bank account that the bank wants a, uh, a, what you call the bank wants a cash flow for, for three years. Allow me to show you how simple this is. And you can do it for yourself. Now, this wasn't sent to you before, but I can also send this to you um, in a to in a template form so that you begin to understand. Now I've, I've darkened some spaces so that you begin to understand. Um, this is my submission to a bank on behalf of a client of mine that really is a, that is a APRI. They do what is um, bee and honey and stuff like that. This could be you in your creative industry. This is your business. So whatever graphics you want to use is up to you. This is the case where the bank had asked for 12 months cash flow. Now they're asking for three months, uh, three years cash flow statements. Let us see how simple this is to be done. And there's some basic information, of course, that you'll give the contact information for, the bank, for your business. And then we will write up what I call, what is your principal activity of your business? What does your business do? What is the mission of your business? What's the purpose of what you're trying to do? And the banker will want to know how you're going to market the business and how you're going to operate the business. The banker will want to know how you're going to market it and operate the business. How you're going to manage and administer the business operations. I've blocked out some spaces here because I don't want you to identify the client. So please allow me that latitude. The business advisor, whoever the business or financial advisor is or the accountant advisor, you can tell them who that is. And you can tell them what financial data is provided in terms of the cash flow and what are you requesting from the bank. I am now applying to the bank to get my bank account and they ask me for a cash flow statement. I tell the banker directly, I want a cash flow statement because I want to operate my business. I want a checking account and I want a savings account. Or in this case, as you see here, the gentleman wanted a VTM card because he had to do some international business. So I'm telling the banker clearly what I want and a conclusion. So what next do you do? Here's what we do. It's a 12 month period. So in the month of April, 12 months is the end of March. You list 12 months on the top of the page. Let me see if I can make it bigger and clear for some people. If it's too small, let me know. All right, so let's do it this way now. All right, so May and April. So for this case, the guy is doing honey. For you, it would be the fees that you're getting for your work in terms of the sales of, 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 of clothing that you're selling. It could be sales, but it could be fees for the services that you're providing. And you indicate to the, to, the, to, to the banker through the documentation that you're presenting, what am I doing on a monthly basis in terms of getting revenue in the business? I have sales, I can get a government grant, I can get other income from things that I'm doing. 
and I could get a contribution. I can make a contribution to the business. So these are all the sources from where the business gets its money. And you have that sorted out. Having done that, having sorted out where the inflow of cash is coming from, I want to know also where the outflow of cash is going to go to. And let's go and deal with that. The outflow of cash has to do with a number of things. Cap, cap, first thing is capital expenditure. What items am I buying that forms assets of the business? In this case, he's buying some um, how many boxes for the hives. He's buying that off in this period of time. He's buying equipment and stuff. He keeping that, that's going to be kept in the business for a number of years. It's capital expenditure. Then he makes purchases. He pays his accounting fees, his advertising and promotion, bank charges, donation, insurance, miscellaneous expenditure, of course, vehicles. Do you recall in my presentation to you this morning, these are all the category of expenses that one had in the business. Here's where we summarize that for, for, the, for the banker and show him what am I going to do on a monthly basis. That's what this is doing. This is a 12 month period, April to March. And it has every expenditure, including the bank loan, but he has no loans from the bank to pay out. But here's what I want you to look at. The banker's concern is at no time do you have a need for cash. If you have a need for cash, he'll want you to explain where you're getting it from because he really don't want to give it to you just so. So that this report that the bank is asking you to present to him to open your bank account is must show him positive cash balances for the 12 month period. This is the 12 month period. And you want to see from the total net is 5,466. No time in that 12 month period you want cash. Now, mind you, there are times where you see the negative that he spent more than he, than he had to, or more than he needed, spent more, but he had sufficient cash in the business, which is the balance brought forward to meet the cash expenses that he had. He didn't need to rely on the bank for that. So that the first thing you have to deal with is, the banker wants you to do this for three years. So you copy this page for three years and project what you're going to do on income for three years, and project what you do on expenditure for three years and make it clear that you are not going to be in a place of needing money, needing money anytime in that three year period. In addition, in addition, for each line item or the majority of them that you have, you know, I have notes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, whatever. I then go and explain to the banker what and how this money was created on, or generated or what expense I'm referring to. So where I showed sales, I am showing him on that over the 12 month period, I made the sales based on the bottles of honey that I'm selling. In your case, it might be different types of clothing that you're, that you're making and selling. In your case, it might be the different styles of designs that you're doing and selling you have to determine what your income is generated from and be able to demonstrate it over a 12 month period. And then I go through now and I explain the various headings as to where money is coming from and where money is going to. The contribution is where the owner makes a contribution to the business. Other income is miscellaneous items. A grant is a grant from the government with regard to the Ministry of the People and the consumables is selling items for consumable items. With regard to the expenditure, capital expenditure is equipment. Purchases is for packaging and stuff, advertising and promotion, accounting. What are these expenses about? And when you're finished, you have one year like this, and you can do three years like that. If there's any things that are changed in that three-year period, you want to explain it, but you'll be demonstrated on a monthly basis from the month in question, the month that you are in, which is April, to March next year, the future 12-month period. So if you take the documents I give to you with regard to business registration, two forms of ID and your, your, your proof of address, and you create this cash flow, 
go open your bank account. Go open your bank account and start to operate. All right? So cash is important to, to your business. Do not treat it lightly. Be mindful that credit is not something that you want to do. You want to get your money in advance. You want to manage your cash inflow and your cash outflow. If you want to go to the bank, create a cash flow statement such as this one. If you're planning your business, sit down and plan what you expect to make on a monthly basis, what you expect to spend, and that too is a budget for you to look at to see what you're dealing with. The time is now, by my watch, 2.06. I just want to cap for you what had been done today and what I'm hoping that by your presence and, this, and, and, and the, this, the discussion that you have learned and understood and be able to apply in your daily business. Remember that your business life is a journey. You're not going to be good at it tomorrow. But as you develop your business, you get better and better doing it. The objective should be to get in a better place in doing your business. So from a summary point of view, here's how we go. It is important that those of you who are not yet registered as a sole trader or partnership or limited liability company, you take the decision to be registered. A sole trader is, is less responsibility. To register a sole trader business, the forms that are provided to you, you fill them out, you go to company's registry. The first one is $20 and you, you pay for that and to get your name approved. The name is approved. You come back and fill the long form, submit that for $220 and you, that's it. You get a business registration certificate. Um, if you go buy somebody's privately to do it, it may cost you eight to $900 just to get that done. Um, having done that, the business is registered. You have a registration certificate. Any changes that you have, with regard to your, your place of address, what the business is doing, you need to let the registrar know about that. So I'm going to do that, you're registered. You have the business, go and open a business bank account for me, please. To open the business bank account, I'm suggesting that you, um, two forms of ID, a utility bill and proof of residence, and then do the cash flow that I just explained to you so that you can present to the banker three years of cash flow to show him and with notes and explanations as to how the money is coming in so that you know how the business is going to be run, that having been dealt with. But if you're running the business now, put the records in place. What records do you need to have in place? You can have manual records, or you can do them in a computerized way. From the information provided to me here, um, WAVE, W-A-V-E, is a free way of getting an accounting system for your business. It's WAVE, if you go on to waveapps.com, you will find it on the internet. Some of us, you could use Xero, X-E-R-O, which is a cheap form of doing it. You can use um, QuickBooks, anything like that you can. So those are the technologies that you can use to improve your processes. Now, you're in business, so therefore my word to you was, do not work in your business, work on your business. What was done for you today are the things that you need to do in working on your business to get your business working right. In working on your business, put in place the systems to run your business effectively. You must know on a monthly basis how much money you got in, how much money you spent, and what your profit estimate is supposed to be. There is the view that if you do that on an annual basis, you have an income and expenditure statement to be able to deliver to your bankers or whoever else needs to look at it. Get your cash vouchers from your stationery shop get the, the cash vouchers, the check payment vouchers, and staple the vouchers onto the bills that you have. Um, where you have um, the bank statements in, in a binder, you buy the, an IXL file from the stationery shop, or you get a, a file with a hard exterior so that you can protect the documentation that you have. In doing so, you want to be able to file it in order. The point I was making to you as where that is concerned is, if you do not put in place the right documentation and keep it in a nice order, then when you have to get this information, this work done, it will cost you more money because you find yourself with having time spent is a cost to your business. So therefore, do it well, do it properly, nice in order, and send it through. What books do you need to keep if you're doing a manual system? 
you must have a sales day book. You must have a cash book. You must have a, a purchase day book. So you keep these three books, but you can simply decide here what. I am simply keeping my ex cash, ex cash book, which is the expenditure side, both for petty cash and cash. And you have the sales day book. And you want to be able to look and see who, how, how much, how, who owes you if you're given credit. I said to you, in these times, it's not a time to give credit. Try and get, if you have to, then try and get as much of your money up front and early o'clock. We provided you with a template for those of you who are in the design business uh, with regard to how you cost your product, how you build the cost associated with your product so you know how profitable you're supposed to be with a unit of sale. And once you keep managing that cost to make sure that your margins are in order, you can be successful at the margin by making sure that you make all the margins that you need to make. All right. So we so from a record keeping point of view, record keeping and cash management, record keeping is important for your business. You must have the records to show to those who are uh, required, bankers or whatever have you. I said to you most importantly, if you are a sole trader and you're a such a trader business and you're not working for anybody else, please make sure you pay your health charge. It's only $429 a year. You're paying it at $107.25 every three months. Health charge. Make sure you pay it. Just go to the Board of Indian Revenue to your number and pay that. If you're in business and you have a sole trader registration or partnership registration on limited liability, be mindful that you have responsibilities for business levy and green fund levy that you need to address. How it is calculated is based on gross income and the Board of Inland Revenue. If you go to the Board of Inland Revenue's website, they have their forms and they have their booklets. Just download the booklet and you can read and they will show you how the calculations are being done. Um, also too, I would advise your strength is in what you do in your creativity and in the work that you do. Find a friend who is an accountant who's willing to help you, to give you advice and to help you with, your, with sorting out your work. Maybe they can show you how to do the things that you need to do properly. Once you understand it, it makes their life easy to help you to be able to get your financials out. And that is the key to the thing. You invest in, a, in a, an accounting system, a free one if you want to, you can get to that. But in getting to that, you understand the various elements that make it up. It has been, I haven't seen any more questions coming in. I still see that there are 47 of you looking on and I am coming to my end of explaining to you this whole issue of record keeping and cash management. You have my email address, you have my phone number. Don't call me late into the night, although that's the time I will be up. You can call me late into the night, it's not a problem. Um, but you can, as I said to you, email to me your questions and for the next, let's say till December this year, you're free to send me into a, a, question, a question and I'll answer you, uh, not a problem. That's um, my service back to, back to my people. So I want to thank you very much for listening. I want to thank you very much for taking the time to invest in your business. And let's hope people that we are able to do good business and better business. I would want to see that you all are making sure that your records are in order. So please be good, be safe. If you have any issue or question, call me, but at the same time, there's something called YouTube. And in YouTube, you can have all the answers to your questions, right? Yes, there's plenty of work ahead, I do agree. Um, some comments are coming through fast and furious, so maybe I just in case somebody asks a question, let me just um, get back to it. Well, thank you very much for your comment. I, I trust I did make it um, uh, interesting for you and you all were able to understand. I, I know if I was in a closer quarter face to face, we can already address some of the issues. I trust in the environment that we are in, we were able to do it well. So I thank you very much and do have a pleasant afternoon and God bless you. Be safe, be secure. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Wood. This has been a very excellent and insightful presentation. Everyone, Mr. Wood will be the facilitator for our costing and pricing webinar next week, Saturday at 9 a.m. We will be promoting this webinar from this Monday and we'll be including the registration link and the link to the go-to meetings on the Thursday. Have a good afternoon and stay safe. Bye.